In this video, I will show you how to open a chest with script in Roblox Studio. Similar to treasure chests in video games where the player walks near them and the lid gets opened revealing an item, that kind of chest opening. So let's begin. First, I open up Roblox Studio, create a new file, I select the base plate template. I will now import a chest model. Right click workspace, select insert from file and select Roblox model to import it. I created this model previously in Maya, but you can use any similar chest model. You can find some freely available models on Roblox Studios toolbox. Let's position it like this, out of the spawn location. My chest model has separate meshes. It has a chest bottom that has a surface light to make the front brighter. It has a chest top. If we move the top, we can see the glowing part inside, which is just a mesh surface with neon material. There is a ring that signifies where the player should enter to open the chest. It is a ring mesh with neon material again. It includes a child that serves as a collider to detect when the player steps inside the ring. It is actually a cylinder part with transparency set to 1. Its can touch property is active because I want to understand when the player touches it. Ok, enough about the chest, let's start implementing. What I will do is to animate the top of the chest when a player in the game walks inside the ring. For that, I will create a local script because I don't want the chest to open for every player in the game when a player walks inside the ring. I only want the player who walked inside the ring to see the chest opening animation. So I will put the script inside the starter character script so that it is copied to the character in the game automatically. I select local script and I rename it as chest. First, I need to access the chest model. For that, let's write a local variable called chest model and fill it in with the model by accessing game.workspace and I will use the function wait for child because when this script runs, we are not sure if the chest object has been loaded yet. So we will wait for it to take its time to be loaded. Then I type chest here because my model's name is chest. And now I need access to the chest top to rotate it. So I'll do the same thing for the chest top. This time I can use my chest model variable because it refers to my chest model in the workspace. Then again, I'll wait for the child of the chest top to make sure that the chest top is loaded. This is especially important when we are trying to access objects in the workspace from a local script. Now, I'll create a hinge here. I'll use a cylinder part because it resembles a hinge to me. I position it like a hinge. I want the top part to be rotated when I rotate this hinge. For this to work, I need to weld the top part of the chest to the hinge part. So let's do that. I rename the part as hinge for the sake of clarity and put it inside the chest model. And I'm adding a weld constraint to my hinge part. I am filling in the parts with the chest top and the hinge. My hinge will be anchored, the chest top will not be, because I will be rotating the hinge. For the weld constraint to work, we have to have one part anchored and the other unanchored. To get the hinge in my script, I'll use another variable called hinge and fill it in with the hinge part by typing chest model colon wait for child hinge. Now I have access to the hinge part and I want to rotate it. First, I want to see it instantly rotated without the animation. I'll take care of the animation later. So I type hinge.cframe. Cframe is used for 3D position and orientation. First, I'll get the hinge's original cframe and multiply it by cframe.angles to rotate it. I'll use a value of 60 for the x-axis and have y and z as 0. I'll use mat.red to convert degrees to radians because cframe.angles takes in radians. Now I am ready to check if it is working correctly, but to see it clearly, I'll add a weight function here with a value of 2 to see the rotation after 2 seconds. I click play, and after 2 seconds, oh no, it's rotated in the wrong direction. It's rotated clockwise. It seems like it is caused by the orientation of the hinge, so let's go back and fix that real quick. I need to change the sign of the rotation value to make it rotate counterclockwise. Let's try again. And there it is. Ok, the next thing I need to do is to animate the rotation. For that, I'll use the twin service. So I'm creating a variable to access the twin service. And here I'll write a local variable named twin info, which will be twin info.new. And the number here is the duration of the twin animation. I want half a second. Then I'll create the twin itself. So local twin equals twin service colon create. And here I want to rotate the hinge, so I type hinge. Tween info is the variable I have created. 
And here I will write a table with the variables of the hinge. I will change the C frame of it. This C frame will be, I can copy and paste it from here. And we don't want it to be rotated instantly now. So I can comment out this line. I don't need it anymore. Now my twin is set up, but for it to work, I need to play it. So twin colon play. Let's see how it works. So after two seconds, it opened nice and smooth. Next, I need to make the collider work so that instead of after two seconds, the chest opens when my player enters the ring. For that, I will get the collider part like how I did for the hinge. So local collider equals chest model column wait for child ring because the collider part is inside the ring. Then again, wait for child collider. So this variable now holds the collider part. I need to check if really the player collides with the collider because I don't want the chest to open if something else enters the ring. For that, I'll use the player's service. I'll create a local variable and use the player service variable to get the local player and fill the variable in with. Here, I'll access the character of the local player. I know my local player has a character since my script is inside the starter character scripts folder. Then I'll use the primary part because I only want the primary part of the character to trigger the collider. Then I'll get the touched to see if it collides or not. I'll connect to that event and I'll write a function, other part. This other part will be filled in automatically. And I'll check if the player is colliding with the collider. So if other part is equal to collider, if so, I will open the chest lid. But then I need to close it when the player exits the ring, right? So I actually need two twins, one for opening and one for closing the chest. Let's create two C frames to store the closed and opened orientations. For closed C frame, I'll use hinge.c frame because initially it is closed. For open C frame, I'll use hinge.c frame times this value, which I use for opening the top. So I will use these in my twins. In twin open, I will use the open C frame, copy and paste for the second twin, rename as twin close and I will use close C frame here. Instead of just playing it, I will play it here and I want to play twin open. I copy this block, paste it, convert it to the touch ended event and this time I will play twin close. Let's see. When I enter, it opens. When I exit, it closes. As you can see, it is quite robust. You can enter and exit frantically. One final touch is to turn up the hinge part's transparency, like so, to hide it from the players. So this is how you can open a chest in Roblox Studio with script. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe to support the channel for more videos. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.